Let's set sail! Okay, so how do you pronounce this, Lisa? Embocadero, I think. I think you're right. I think we're going to go with that, but I'm going to keep that there just as a visual cue. For case... every time I'm unable to say it. No, I'll call it the ship game. I like it. This game is an economic simulation and area control game. You are, in a sense, docking your ships at three different wharfs, and you are building buildings on top of them. Once you have a boat attached to a dock, you can dock additional boats to those uh, already established boats. Your boats are going to be how you generate your income. Throughout the game, you're going to be adding more boats and buildings, which will have different bonuses along the way. Certain buildings are going to require you to sink a boat. Now, that boat stays on the board. The only thing that happens is you lose the income from that ship. As you go through this game, you're going to be jockeying for positions at different docks because you score three times throughout this game, once during each round. And you want to have the majority of buildings along a wharf. Yeah. What would you say about just the table presence of this game with like the minis, the boards, the art style? Yeah, so the production of this game is phenomenal. And they really thought about the actual user-friendly aspects. And the way I say that is when we got the punch boards, they're actually dual layered. And I kind of wondered... What was the purpose? Um, and then when you get going, you realize that you're actually stacking little plastic mini ha buildings on top of each other. Yeah, it's like a simple thing, that, but in a lot of other games that are kind of like, you know, anything where you're building up or you're building out, you knock something over, you're, uh-oh. In this game, everything's kind of almost locked in, so you're, you're good to go. It's, it's like that small thing, but it's actually a really big thing when you're playing the game. Yeah, and then the cards, just the way that they've uh, put all the information on them, Everything has been really well thought out. Yeah, and it's a dual-sided board depending on your player count, and we always love to see that. The game is tight. I, I'm just going to go right into replayability. The game's only 15 turns, so there's three major rounds and five turns each. Money is tight. You start with $15, but by the end of the game, you're going to just be sitting there whenever you're buying a card or doing anything, you're going to be counting your money. You have a very small economic engine at the other side. Sometimes at the end of the round, you might get like $4, $6, at best so you have to manage your money and you have to be very cognizant of what's just kind of going on on the board the first and third turns you really have to play what's going on alongside the wharfs and then just later on in the game you have this other track i forget the name of the, the track. city council the city council track because also it's political with any kind of building game as it should be uh and you have to kind of work your way down that as well and you get bonus points so I, I want to say it's almost kind of Lacerda-esque in terms of sometimes you will take a turn, but you will get a couple extra little bonus actions on top of that, depending on how you play your council track, your ships, or your buildings go. Uh, I find it very interesting and replayable, and the one thing I kind of love with a lot of games, and we play a lot of games, sometimes we play a game three or four times, and, and like that's as good as I'm going to get, and maybe I have a little bit of a deviation here. This time, like even up to like the eighth game, you're still kind of like, figuring out that game, figuring out that system, and you're kind of getting a little bit better as you go, but I'm still far from perfect. Yeah, and the other thing is, it really depends on the codes that come out um, and the amount of money you have to get those codes. So the way this game works is you're playing codes, and after every turn, you have to buy another code from the market that you are going to be using in the next round. So the codes that you buy are going to be dependent on the amount of money you have and the codes that come out because codes cost anywhere from zero dollars to three dollars and then on those codes you can either build it or there's a throwaway action that can take place on the codes so you may be buying a code for its kind of bonus throwaway action rather than the code itself yeah and in the cool aspect of this game that i like is a lot of the ships you're basically the ships are almost your engine to kind of get you going to get to make your buildings but when you place a ship you get like let's say it's a wood or a rock or whatever the resource is you can use it every round so you don't exhaust that resource until you sink a ship 
So you're kind of like building up at that engine, but as Lisa's saying, at the same time, you have to be aware of like, how much money do I have? What do I have coming in? So you're trying to like balance a lot of different things. Uh, so from a gameplay standpoint, there's a lot here and there will be a lot going on in the future because as you kind of level up, the game levels up along with you. And rulebook is very well done and there's not that many rules in the game. For something of like this weight, it's the decision making is within the, like, what am I going to do? Oh my gosh, my money is so tight, but I'm not having to remember a billion things. Absolutely. This is a strategy game. It is not a rules heavy game, which is amazing when you get to replayability because this game can easily be pulled out. Very easy to remember. Iconography is straightforward. Yeah. So you can get this game out even after six months. Maybe take a quick flip through uh, a rule book, but all the actions, your tone actions are actually laid out um, on, a, on the card itself. Yeah, no, yeah, and the card has like a little recesses to put your other cards and tuck it in. So you can tell a lot of thought has gone into this production. And then on top of that, the execution was there. So sometimes with <laughs> some modern games now, you don't get the thought or the execution. But this game, you, you have everything. You have everything you need here. Yeah, so for our collection, what do you think? Oh, definitely. Uh, it's going to be one of my top games of 2021, I think. Absolutely. I think that this game, had it been in our... Uh, 21 by 10 challenge we'd easily surpass it um this game is definitely going to get a lot more plays in 2021 and for years to come so it definitely goes the distance